God's good plan. That's the title of this message on this Good Friday. I don't know about you, but I love to make plans. Many people right now are starting to make plans because lockdown is easing. Even the government have made plans about how we're going to make our way out of lockdown and we'll see normality start to come back. And I'm so excited for that. And people are beginning to plan holidays and plan their jobs and their schedules. Many people are making plans and, and I like to make plans as well. But you know, when we think of Good Friday and we remember what Jesus has done for us, we discover that actually it was part of God's incredible plan. That our God is a God who makes plans and sticks to his plans. And tonight we're going to be reading from Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. And this was an incredible prophecy about the Saviour who was going to come hundreds of years later. But this is what it says in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 1 to 12. It says, Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence, like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with the deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was laid away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had, deceived and had never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave, but it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. I will give him the honours of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for rebels. Good Friday is the Friday where we remember Jesus' death upon the cross. But have you ever wondered, why do we call it Good Friday? Especially when we think about what this day is all about. The death of of the Son of God upon the cross, the gruesome death, the horrific death of Jesus upon the cross. How could we call this day a good day? How could this be a good Friday? And not only that, as we've already read this evening in Isaiah chapter 53, not only is it a horrific day because of God's death upon the cross, because of Jesus' death upon the cross, but actually we read that this was part of God's plan. This was part of God's good plan, as it says in Isaiah chapter 53. You know, the reason why we call this day Good Friday, even though there was hor uh, this horrific event that took place on the day, it is because of the incredible result that came from this day. The satisfying of the righteous demands of God Almighty as Jesus died in our place. That's why we call it Good Friday. Humanity's worst mistake was at the same time part of God's good plan. Jesus' death on the cross was part of God's good plan. 
The Bible tells us that in Isaiah 53 verse 10 once again, but it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life was made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. You know, this means that Jesus' death on the cross, his crucifixion, it wasn't a mistake. It wasn't like, the God, like God's plan had gone sideways on some events took place that derailed God's plan. But actually, Jesus' death on the cross was part of God's plan and it was part of God's good plan. It wasn't an afterthought, but in fact, it was part of God's plan from the very beginning. In fact, even before the creation of this world, the Bible tells us in Revelation 13 that it was part of God's, God's good plan to crush his one and only son, for Jesus to die upon the cross. You see, in the very beginning, God created everything the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1. God created the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, the solar system. God created the mountain, the seas, the rivers, the grass. He created it all. He created the animals, the birds in the air, the animals on the land. He created everything. And in Genesis chapter 1, we read that God's greatest creation was mankind. It was you and me. God created Adam and Eve. And God, the Bible tells us that mankind was created in the image of God. We are a reflection of God's glory. Think about that right now. You aren't a mistake. You aren't just a result of some big bang where particles came together just by some coincidence and there you are and there we are. But actually you were thought of before the creation of this world. God has knit you together in your mother's womb. God, every day of your life has been written down in God's book. God has created us and he created you and me in his image. You aren't an accident. You aren't a mistake. But you were created by a God who loves you, by the God who created you and who cares for you and has a plan and purpose for your life. Every person, every tribe, every nation, every race, every tongue, we've been created in the image of God. And you know the reason why we were, we were created? We were created to have a relationship with the Creator. We were created to know God and be in relationship with Him as our Heavenly Father. You know, the Bible tells us that Adam and Eve, they had this incredible fellowship with God in this place that God had created for them. The Garden of Eden, this paradise here on earth. The Bible tells us that they walked in God. They spoke with God face to face every day. Can you imagine that? The God who created everything, they spoke to face to face every day. They enjoyed fellowship with him. But you know, this was all ruined by the choice of mankind. That's what the Bible tells us. Because of Adam's, Adam and Eve's mistake, sin entered into the world. They chose to disobey God. Because the Bible says that God told Adam and Eve they could enjoy everything, but they weren't to eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They weren't to eat fruit from this tree because if they did, God said their eyes would be open and they would be like God. They would know evil and they would know good. And that wasn't God's intention. God's intention was for us just to know him, to enjoy relationship with him, to know intimacy with him and to enjoy him forevermore. But you know, Adam and Eve, they chose to disobey God. In Genesis 3, we read how this serpent came along, who was Satan. And he came and tempted Eve to eat this fruit from this tree that God said they shouldn't eat from. The Bible says that Eve ate that fruit and then she gave some to Adam and he ate it. And the Bible says their eyes were opened. They were filled with guilt, with shame, with condemnation. They, they recognized their own nakedness. They seen who they were. And the Bible says that that day, sin entered the world. That is known as the fall. But the Bible says that this great disobedience, this choice to disobey God, created sin. And this sin entered into the world. And you know, sin, it ushered in darkness. And the result of their disobedience was separation from God. Sin cuts us off from God because God is holy and God is perfect. And this disobedience, this sin, every wrong action against God cuts us off from God. And they chose to disobey God. And God, he threw them out of the Garden of Eden, but he could have killed them right there and right then. But actually, Genesis chapter 3 tells us that this was part of God's plan. God knew that they would sin and they would mess up. 
and God's plan was set in motion. He said one day there'll be someone who will come to make this right. He'll crush the head of the serpent and the serpent will bite his heel, but he will have victory over the enemy, over sin and death. There would be one who would come to make it all right. You know, our God, the Bible tells us, is a God who is rich in mercy and grace. And he could have sent Adam and Eve to hell. He could have sent them to a place that is far off from them, that place of punishment because of their disobedience. But our God is a God who is rich in mercy. And so he establishes this covenant with his people. Generations go on and he establishes this covenant or in other words, a holy contract with his chosen people. It was this law. You might be familiar with it. The Ten Commandments and many other laws. And God said to mankind, he said, if you obey these laws, then this will make you right with me and you can have relationship with me once again. Although sin had cut us off from God, this would bring mankind close to God once again. But you know, mankind, they kept sinning. They kept breaking God's law. They kept kept making mistakes. They kept turning away from God and breaking this promise. Generation from generation, time and time again, mankind would turn away from God to go after the, their own pleasures, to go after the lusts of the flesh. They'd turn to the things of this world to try and satisfy them and fill the void within their lives. That's what mankind did time and time again. They were searching after worthless things that wouldn't last and wouldn't fulfill them. And maybe you're watching this tonight and maybe you were like that. You were searching for things in this world to try and fill you and satisfy you, things that will never ever satisfy your life. That's what mankind was doing. You know, they chose separation from the eternal God. Think about that. The God who created them, the God who loved them, the God who created everything for them. They turned their back on him for the things of this world. They chose the world and everything in it. In other words, they worshipped the created over the creator. And you know, you and I have done that. We all can do that because of sin. And you know, as a result of that, mankind was heading straight from was heading straight to hell that lost eternity, away from God, separated from God because of their disobedience, cut off from God forever. So you might be thinking right now, this sounds like an awful plan. Did God actually know about this? And if he did, then this doesn't sound like a good plan at all. It sounds like God's plans were actually messed up because his creation, mankind, had turned away from him and it looked like they were going to a lost eternity. Was this part of God's plan? It seems like a failed plan. You know, I'm so glad that this isn't the end of God's plan. Even though mankind kept messing up and they would try, they would kill animals. They had this sacrificial system where they would put their sins into animals and sacrifice them once a year to try and make themselves right with God. And the animal's blood would cleanse them from their sin. But that didn't work. It didn't work because they would keep sinning and they would keep messing up. But you know, the Bible tells us that at just the right time, God was going to step in. He was going to intervene and he was going to do what mankind could never do. He was going to step in and take our place. And the way that God entered this world was through his one and only son, Jesus Christ. He became God, God became man, fully God, fully man. He took on flesh, the Bible says, the son of God, who was the savior of the world, the Messiah. He was going to come as the answer, as the remedy to sin once and for all. He was going to do what you and I could never do and reconcile us with God. You know, the Bible tells us that Jesus lived a perfect life. He was without sin. He didn't gossip, he didn't steal, he didn't lie. There was no hatred within him. He didn't lust, he had no pride, he didn't long for idols. There was no sin within him. And he fulfilled that law which you and I could not. He satisfied the requirements of God's law. He followed that law which you and I couldn't. And then the Bible says that 2,000 years ago on this Good Friday, Jesus was crucified on the cross. You know, you might say tonight, why did Jesus die on the cross? If he didn't do anything wrong, why was he killed? Why was he nailed to that cross? Why did he have to go to the cross for you and for me? This doesn't sound like a good plan from God. But you know, as I've already said, before there was a solar system, before there was an earth, before there was a garden of Eden, before Adam and Eve messed up, God knew what was going to happen. And God had planned to come to this world 
in the form of his son. He was going to die on the cross. And the reason he went to the cross was for you and for me. He came to take my place and your place, to take the punishment that we deserve because of our disobedience. Why would he do this? Why did God do this? It was because of his love. It was because of his love for you and it was because of his love for me. There was no other reason. It was because he wanted to take our place, take the punishment that we deserve, that you deserve, for every wrong thing that mankind has ever ever done, for all of mankind's sin. He took our place so we could be reconciled with God. He did it so we could have a relationship restored with God once and for all. If there was any other way, then God would have done it. But there was no other way. But God had to suffer and die in our place. He bore the punishment for our sins. He bore our sin upon himself, the sin of the world. You know, if living a good moral life would get us to heaven, then God would have made that way possible. But it doesn't. It's not about our good deeds. It's not about what you and I could do. Because the Bible says we've all sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. There is nothing that you and I could do to make ourselves right with the Holy God. But God stepped in. He took our place. He lived a perfect life that we couldn't live. And he died on the cross. He took our sin so that we could wear his righteousness. Jesus came to earth to purchase back what was lost in the Garden of Eden. He came to die on the cross for your sin and my sin. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 says, He suffered death for us. He is now crowned with glory and honour. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. In other words, Jesus was born. Jesus was born so that he could die. Jesus came to this earth to die for you and for me. In his own words, he said, Jesus said, he had come to give his life as a ransom for many. You know, the purpose of incarnation was for atonement. The birth of Jesus was for the death of Jesus. The cross was Jesus' goal. He knew that was his ultimate mission. It was his destination from the beginning. He knew about it. He spoke about it. Even to his disciples, they didn't even understand it. And even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus knew what was lying ahead of him. And there in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was sweating drops of blood as he thought about the sin that he never experienced. He would have to bear the sin of the world and take the punishment of the world. He knew what was lying before him. And he said to his father in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken away from me you know that cup that he was talking about there was the cup of God's wrath the cup of God's judgment that should have been poured out on you and for me it was the cup of God's fury as Isaiah called it but you know Jesus came and he bore that for you and for me he knew what was lying ahead of him even as he was put on trial as he was being as he was put on trial wrongly accused he was thinking about you and me You know, even as he was beaten, as he was whipped, as he had his beard torn out, as he had that 39 lashes on his back with that whip, which would have had nails and metal pieces on it. He was thinking of you and me. This was part of God's good plan. As that crown of thorns was thrusted into his head, he was thinking of you and me. As he was made to carry his own cross to Calvary, he was thinking of you and me. As mankind mocked him, as they spat on him, as they beat him, he was thinking of you and me. As mankind nailed him to that cross, he was thinking of you and me. As he hung on that cross in that hot sun, in that hot day, as he hung there for six hours trying to grasp his last breath, He was thinking of you and me. As that spear was thrusted into his side, he was thinking of you and for me. As he cried out on that cross, it is finished. He was thinking of you and for me, uh, you and me. You know, when he cried out on that cross, Eli, Eli, labach samachtani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As he was cut off from his father, the first time ever, the only time ever, as he was cut off from his father because he bore your sin and my sin. He was thinking of you and for me. And the reason he did it was because of his love for us. He did it so that we could be forgiven, so that we wouldn't have to be punished because of our sins. He carried our sins so we could be made right with God, so we could have this restored relationship with God. And you know, many people today reject this. Maybe you're watching this and you've rejected Jesus. Maybe you've turned away from him and, and maybe you wandered away from him. But realize tonight the reason why Jesus went to the cross was to take the punishment for your sin and my sin 
so that we wouldn't have to go to a lost eternity, that place of hell and that, pl that lake of burning fire, as the Bible says, and that place where we are cut off from God for all of eternity. You know, there'll be no second chances once we come before God. This is the only opportunity. These are the days of mercy. Right now, you have a chance to get your life right with God. And it is by turning away from your sin, saying sorry from your sin, for your sin, and asking Jesus to forgive you and come into your life. Be your Lord and Savior. Today is the day of mercy. And Jesus made this possible through his death upon the cross. Jesus made this possible. And that's why we call this day Good Friday. As Jesus died on the cross, the sin of the world was placed on him. He bore your sin and my sin so that we could be forgiven. 1 Peter 2 verse 24 to 25 says, He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so we could be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds you are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. This is what happened when Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. So as we come to a conclusion on this Good Friday of this message, as tragic as Jesus' death was upon the cross, we in fact remember that actually it was very good and it was part of God's good plan because if Jesus didn't go to the cross, then there was no way that you and I could ever be reconciled to God. We would be cut off from God for all of eternity. Jesus died to make that way possible for you and I to be reconciled to God. It was all part of God's good plan to rescue mankind, to save you and me. And you know, Satan thought that he had won the victory on that Good Friday. He thought that he had won it all and that he had conquered Jesus forever and that mankind was going to that lake of fire with him. That's what Satan thought. But I'm so glad that that wasn't the end of God's plan because three days later, the Bible tells us Jesus rose again up from the grave. He arose. He conquered sin. He conquered Satan. He conquered death once for all time for all people. He made that way possible. And I can't wait to celebrate that with you this coming Sunday. The fact that Jesus is alive and the Bible says because he lives, we also can live. We can know his resurrection life right here, right now. We can know the forgiveness of sins, but also we can know eternal life as well. We can spend all of eternity with our Savior on the new heaven and the new earth. He did it all for you and for me. So on this Good Friday, let's remember it is a Good Friday because Jesus made a way possible for us to be saved. It was all part of God's good plan to reconcile us back with himself. Let's thank Jesus for what he has done, for his incredible love and mercy towards you and me. Amen. Well, tonight I'd like to give you an opportunity to respond to this message. This is the greatest news of all. This is the gospel, the good news, that Jesus Christ came to this earth to take your sin and my sin so that we could be forgiven and reconciled to God and have eternal life, that we could be with him in heaven for all of eternity. There are not many ways to heaven. There is one way, and that is by turning away from your sin, by believing in the Lord Jesus and asking him to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior. And this is a free gift. Jesus paid it all, and God is calling us. He's inviting you tonight to accept this free gift, and he did it because of his love for you. And so tonight, I'd like to extend this invitation to you. In a moment, I'm going to say a prayer, and I'd love to include you in this prayer. The words of this prayer are going to be on this screen, and tonight, for those of you who know that God has been speaking to you, God has been speaking to you tonight and you'd like to know the forgiveness of your sins and you'd like to know God for yourself. You'd like to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right here and right now and you'd like to receive that gift of eternal life. Then all I'd like you to do is to repeat these words after me and mean it in your heart. And today you can receive the gift of salvation. You can know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's pray together. And if you're saying this for the first time or maybe you're re-surrendering your life to Jesus, then please repeat these words after me and ask Jesus to come into your life. Dear Jesus, today I surrender. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. I ask that you would save me. I believe you died on the cross and rose again. Today I choose to follow you and ask that you would be my Lord and Saviour. Thank you for the fresh start I now have in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we are celebrating with you. I'm celebrating with you tonight about this prayer that you have prayed. 
tonight. The old is gone. All the mistakes, all your sin, all your guilt, all your shame, it is, it is gone. It has been covered by the blood of Jesus. You have been forgiven. You were a new creation, the Bible says. The old is gone. The new has come. You've got a brand new start in and through Jesus. Tonight, you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And also, you've received that promise of eternal life. The Bible says all of heaven is celebrating right now about this decision that you have made. And we are celebrating with you. In a moment, there's going to be a link that will pop up on the screen. It's going to be a link that is for our website, gatewaychurchcamry.co.uk forward slash no God. If you said that prayer tonight, then I'd like you to please click on that link. It'll take you to our website. And on that page, you'll find out a little bit more uh, information about the decision that you have just made. And right at the bottom of that page, there is a form. I'd like to ask you to please fill out that form if you said that prayer tonight. And we as a church, we're going to get in touch with you. I'll get in touch with you just to introduce myself to you. We'll introduce ourselves to you as a church. And we just want to send you a few things just to help you begin to take your next steps in your new journey in following Jesus. But please know it is the best decision that you'll ever make. That you're a child of God tonight and we are celebrating with you. Amen.